Hi, I'm Dr. Jen Harrison from drjenniferharrison.com and welcome to your Best Self Minute. This episode of your Best Self Minute is inspired by uh, chapter 40 in my book, Stress Self to Best Self, a body, mind, spirit guide to creating a happier and healthier you. Uh, for years, I've been a, a huge fan of the TV show, The Big Bang Theory. And for followers of the show, you know that Sheldon drives Penny crazy uh, with with his obsessive three-part knocking process, where he'll go knock, 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 Penny, knock, 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 Penny, knock, 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 Penny. So in one episode, uh, Penny teases Sheldon uh, by saying, who do we love as he's knocking? So it goes, um, you know, who do we love, Penny? Who do we love, Penny? Who do we love, Penny? And then she opens the door with a big smile on her face, much to uh, Sheldon's chagrin. So all joking aside, who do we love? It's easy to come up with a list of people we don't like and who drive us crazy. Uh, it may be co-workers, family members, an ex-spouse or partner. Um, and ironically, the people we do love are often the ones we take for granted. However, what I would like to explore uh, in this video is the one key person we usually don't love enough and they're involved in every single relationship we have. What's the common denominator in all of your relationships, the good ones and the not so good ones? Of course, you. One of the most important relationships we have is the relationship we have with ourselves. If you're not happy with you and you don't like yourself very much, let alone love yourself, how can you expect to be in happy and positive relationships with others? Whether it's family, friends, co-workers, your spouse or partner, neighbors or clients, employees, how you feel about yourself will be reflected in the interactions you have with the people in your life. And when I talk about self-love and self-esteem, I'm not talking about conceit or selfishness. Those are not true aspects of self-love. I'm talking about being able to look yourself in the mirror, look yourself in the eye, smile and say, I love you. I'm talking about being happy with who you are, faults and all. I'm talking about healthy self-esteem or love of self. Psychotherapist uh, Dr. Nathaniel Brandon, uh, who's an expert on self-esteem, uh, stated that, quote, how we feel about ourselves crucially affects virtually every aspect of our life experience, from the way we function at work, in love, in sex, to the way we operate as parents, to how high in life we are likely to rise. I cannot think of a single psychological problem that is not traceable to a poor self-concept. And he finishes by saying, positive self-esteem is a cardinal requirement of a fulfilling life. Vulnerability expert and researcher, Dr. Brene Brown, says that learning to love ourselves and others requires empathy and compassion. Positive self-worth gives purpose and meaning to life. So not sure where to start with this, with building your self-esteem. Well, I have a two-step process um, that may help you. First of all, take a look at the people who push your buttons, the ones that tend to really tick you off, and then reflect on these questions. What is the common theme in your interaction with these people? What do you think is the root cause, the actual root cause? And what life lesson can you learn from these situations? Sometimes the people who really irritate us are actually just mirroring back to us an aspect of ourselves that we really don't like. That may sound a little counterintuitive, but I invite you to reflect on that. It's going to require a little bit of digging. And of course, there are lots of books out there by people like Dr. Nathaniel Brandon, Dr. Brene Brown, uh, Dr. Robert Holden is another one and, and others that are, are great resources. And there are also great self-care techniques like the Sedona Method and Emotional Freedom Techniques or EFT tapping. Uh, and as you know, I'm a certified EFT practitioner. Um, these techniques can really help in releasing limiting beliefs that are holding us back from loving and honoring ourselves the way that we should. And now if the problem is more complicated or you really don't know where to start in building your self-confidence and self-esteem, you may wanna seek out the advice of a counselor or psychologist to help you on your journey in having a healthier relationship with yourself. So the second part of this process is to look at the people you love in your life. Who do you love? 
Is the relationship balanced? Meaning, are your feelings of love and respect reciprocated? And how do you feel when you think about the people you love? And when I say love, I mean all types of love, including romantic love, um, familial love, so the love you'd have for members of your family, uh, deep friendship love, and spiritual love. And this could even include the love that you have for your pet. The power of love to heal has been demonstrated in interesting research um, for example, in his book, uh, Love and Survival, The Scientific Basis for the Healing Power of Intimacy, cardiologist Dr. Dean Ornish talks about what he has found to be the most powerful and meaningful intervention for coronary artery disease, and that is, quote, love and intimacy and the emotional and spiritual transformation that often results. And of course, I can't talk about love and self-appreciation research without mentioning the HeartMath Institute that has been doing groundbreaking research in this area for decades. They've developed and tested a number of techniques that people can learn um, to do to develop more self-compassion. And the research indicates that these techniques have a positive impact not only on how people feel about themselves, but also on the heart itself. Now, if you're watching this video on YouTube, um, head on over to my website, drjenniferharrison.com to check out this Your Best Self Minute uh, episode for a list of experts I mentioned so you can check them out further. I also have more information on emotional freedom techniques, also known as EFT or tapping on my website too. So I invite you to focus, even meditate on love and work on nurturing the loving relationships you have in your life and most importantly, loving yourself. Now, if you found this video helpful, make sure you like it, share it with a friend who may need it, and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one. For additional resources to help you go from your stressed self to your best self, head on over to my website, drjenniferharrison.com, and join our best self community. It's free to join, and you'll get exclusive member-only access to powerful content. Plus, you'll receive five amazing bonuses. Remember, becoming your best self starts with just one step in the right direction. Thanks for watching.